you know, I find it hard. I find it hard to sleep. I think about all the things I done done, all the people I done hurt, the blood I done spilled, the lies I done told, the games I done played. I think about it and it messed with me so bad that it's hard for me to go to sleep. You know, when I was young, my daddy went wherever he went. I don't know if he in jail. I don't know if he did. I don't know if he turned his life around and started a new family. I don't know. What I do know is... Everybody just kept telling me, be the man, you know, you the man of the house now. You know, it's up to you. Buy your, you know, do what you got to do so you can buy your mama a house one day. You know, these cliche things, but, you know, me being a kid, I thought that that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, daddy gone, so I'm next in charge. So I got ahead of myself. I went out, got a little work. When I say work, I ain't talking about flipping no burger or nothing like that. I'm talking about I got on the streets. I got on the corner, started being a lookout boy. You know, eventually it gave me a little weed to sell. You know, eventually gave me a lot of weed to sell. And I would help mama and I helped my brothers and sisters and all that. So, you know, mama knew it, but she knew it was coming from and all that, but you know, after her working two, three jobs all the time, she was happy to get a little help. Um, growing up here, it's, these young black boy lives is not counted the same as everybody else. You know, when, when somebody gets shot, the police don't investigate to see what happened. They look at their records. They see if the shooter had a record, and they see if the person that got shot had a record. And if the person that got shot, you know, has a record, then they look at it as, oh, well, it must have been self-defense. They must have got into an argument, and he pulled a gun, but the other guy got to his gun faster. Because they figure, why go down there and start investigating between two, two animals that was fighting over a little piece of the jungle. So I came up not realizing life was valuable around me, not realizing that the people around me, no matter how they acted, no matter what they was into, no matter what, no matter what went down, they lives still had some kind of value. But all I cared about was the money. It wasn't about just getting my mama a house because I never could. No matter how much drugs I sold, when I went from weed to, to crack and heroin and stuff, it didn't make a difference. I never could keep, you know, no money coming. It's like it was a hole in my bag. The harder I hustled, the bigger the hole got. The more money I made, the bigger the hole got. Every time I try to get ahead, I always end up going right back to where I started from. So, I got into this, um, like this depression, man. And, um, and you know, when you were uh, on the streets and all that, you can't go to your folk, you can't go to your people and tell them you depressed, man. They freaking laugh you off the block, man. You know, you just it just don't happen, man. You don't do that. Then they looking at you like you saw. Next thing you know, somebody finna try you. Somebody finna try to ride you. Somebody finna try to play you like you saw for something. And now you finna end up having to fight somebody or maybe even worse because some folks just gonna take it too far. Everybody want that spot, man. All them boys out there selling that dope, man. You know, they ain't looking at the next man like he a, a, a friend. They looking at him like he an enemy. He taking food out their mouth. You know, so. You gotta be careful. You can't show no weakness, man. You gotta do your best to put on that fake tough guy look and that, um, 
and that little fake smile from time to time and do what you gotta do. It was all good until my mom. You know, I, I knew my mama smoked a little weed or something or something like that, you know, but you know, when you when you start messing with the hard stuff, you know, little by little it just like eat away at you until it really gets you how it wanna get you. So I started seeing the changes in her. I started seeing her eyes looking all dark and, and like wrinkled and I started seeing her her lips being dry. You know, her hair, she wasn't, you know, combing and, and keeping her hair moisturized and stuff like she used to. It was just all blown out and dry looking all the time. I just seen her going down little by little. And, uh, instead of trying to get us some help, instead of trying to you know, do something to, instead of trying to do something, what did I do? I gave it to her, myself. My reasoning was, well, she already strung out and um, she ain't gonna stop cold turkey, but if I try to let her, if I, if I don't, you know, do something and give it to her, she gonna go get it from somebody else. But when she get it from somebody else, you know, it could be some bad stuff in it, or, or you know, they could rob her and hurt her. Sometimes you show up to buy dope from somebody, and depending on how they go, how things going for them, they might just take the money and the dope, and might hit you or hurt you or kill you. Man. So, so I decided that I'm just gonna give it to them. You know, I didn't charge her, you know, but um. I was charging her something worse than money. I was sucking the life out of her. I was killing her. Had her walking around, a real walking dead. Had her walking around a zombie. Not even, not even my mama no more. Not the lady that raised me and the lady that looked out for me and fed me and held down the household. Now I don't even really know her no more. I gotta say good morning to her, th you know, three or four times before she even realizes I'm there. Little by little, I destroyed my mom. All cause I. Had to step up and be the man of my house.